After spending the last 10 days on the road, the Tigers are excited to be back home on a gorgeous night here in the Motor City. We present Tigers baseball tonight. It's game one in this five-game series featuring the Tigers and the Kansas City Royals. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers baseball. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, glad to have you with us. After a grueling road trip, the Tigers come back home, Ron, and they will take on the Kansas City Royals in a five-game series here. Doubleheader coming up tomorrow, but very important games for the Tigers. We look at some of the upcoming games for the two teams behind them. It's a pretty big stretch for really all three teams that are in consideration right now. Well, these games are much more important for the Kansas City Royals than they are for the Tigers. Of course, the Tigers, uh, they have a stranglehold right now on first place. The Cleveland Indians, they've got some games out on the West Coast against the Oakland Athletics and the Los Angeles Angels. So those games are very, very difficult. But make no mistake about it, the Tigers will go about their business as they do every single night, one game at a time. Jim has his boys ready to play. And Anibal Sanchez is ready to play as well. He will go tonight for the Tigers in his last five, about as good as it gets in the big leagues. He is one of the best pitchers in baseball, and we've seen him put that on display. He's got that fastball that's been hovering right around 95 miles an hour since he came off the disabled list. Three and one in his last five with a 1.60 ERA. He pitches great here at Comerica Park. He also dominates the American League Central. There are a lot of reasons to really believe that Anibal Sanchez can go out there at night and slow down this Kansas City Royals team, which is playing with a lot of confidence right now. Well, both of these starters here tonight have done really good work against the American League Central Division. Jeremy Guthrie is 10 over the Central in his career. Anibal Sanchez, meanwhile, 6-6, six and six, but a very good ERA of 2.10. So it should be a good start to a five-game series. After a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios in Mickey York. Coming up, the first of five between two of the top teams in the Central. Tigers Royals. Game one next.
the Tigers and the Kansas City Royals in what will be a five game series. The Tigers opening up a home stand and they do so in first place in the central and we are ready for baseball here tonight as Anibal Sanchez missing outside of Chris Getz one ball and no strikes. Gorgeous night for baseball here in the Motor City plenty of sunshine. There's a ball outside 2 and 0 on Getz the leadoff man for the Royals. Tigers come in tonight at 70 and 49. Royals at 62 and 56. There's a ball outside, and now suddenly 3 and 0 on Getz. This is a team that you do not want to give too many free passes to. They lead the American League with 96 stolen bases as a club. There's a strike call. Gets in the leadoff slot. Uh, the last time we saw the Royals, they had Gordon batting in the leadoff spot, but Gordon now has been bumped down to cleanup. Here's the 3 1, and it's a strike called on the outer edge. 3 and 2. Anibal Sanchez on the hill for the Tigers to open up the homestand. 3 2 pitch is rolled foul, first base side. Anibal looking for his 11th victory of the season. Eric Hosmer is waiting in the on deck circle. Tigers winning six out of ten on the just completed road trip. Now again the three two. Getz sends a ground ball to third. It's going to go foul. Ned Yost has his team playing some meaningful games down the stretch here. The Royals had to feel a little bit frustrated though Rod with the. Really, the run they went on, they couldn't gain much ground on the Tigers. Well, the Tigers are the class of the division. They have won the last two American League Central Division crowns, and the Cleveland Indians and the Royals know they have to beat the Tigers head to head if they're going to take that belt from them. Fouled off, and Getz now is giving Sanchez fits here. Tigers with a little bit of an advantage here with Brian Pena behind the dish tonight against his former club, the Kansas City Royals. He kind of knows the strengths and the weaknesses. Of the majority of the players in this starting lineup here tonight, and no doubt uh, he will be able to lead Sanchez beautifully. Slicing single to left field. Getz is aboard to start the ball game. Rest of the Royals lineup presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. You saw Getz. He'll be followed by Hosmer and Butler. Gordon batting cleanup. Perez, recently off the concussion list, is catching. Maxwell just acquired. Bonifacio just acquired. Escobar and Dyson rounded out. And Sanchez presented tonight by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. 2-5 ERA, ERA looking for his 11th win here today. He commands four pitches, whether it's the fastball in the mid-90s, the curve, the slider, the changeup. Supreme confidence in all four of them. And Sanchez with a very, very good ERA of 2.58 coming into play tonight. He's also pitched very well in this ballpark since the Tigers acquired him. Snap throw gets back in there. He has stolen 10 out of 12 this year. Here's the 0 1. A strike call. A couple of outstanding fastballs on the outer third of the plate to probably their most dangerous hitter, Eric Hosmer. Hosmer comes in batting 293 was just two for 13 in the series against Miami that the Royals just completed. They lost two out of three against the Marlins that Miami team. They've got some really good young arms. They can run at you. And the Royals found that out. Hosmer has not had much success against Sanchez either just one for nine against him. Three fourteen from June through today compared to 261 first two months of the year for Hosmer. And he sends a broken bat little looper into left center field base hit gets will hold it second. And the Royals have two aboard here with nobody out. Let's take a look at the Tigers starting defense as always presented by Beaumont Health System. Dirk Kelly and Hunter in the outfield Austin Jackson with the beginning of this game off. It's a scheduled day off. He's healthy. Nothing wrong with him. Cabrera Iglesias and Fonte and Fielder in the infield and Brian Pena who has been getting the bulk of the catching duties since Avila has been on that seven day concussion list. 
So now Billy Butler, who has made a living against Tigers pitching, he's batting 289 with two on, nobody out. And Sanchez hits the outside corner with a fastball 0 and 1. And something else Billy Butler also does a lot of. He hits into a lot of double plays. Should Sanchez make a good breaking ball pitch down at the bottom of the zone, uh, he might get himself one here. Now the 0 1. Strike called on the inside part of the plate. Billy is a career 332 hitter against the Tigers. And it's outside one and two. Sanchez had a lot of success in terms of how he has pitched against the Royals in his career, just three starts, but. He has a 1 and 2 record against them and a 0 8 2 ERA, which points to the fact that the Tigers have not gotten him any runs. Trying to pitch out of difficulty here in the first. And a ground ball to short. This is looking like a double play. 6, 4, 3. Two gone. Advance gets to third base. That is now the fifth double play that this tandem has turned since Infante has come off the disabled list. Iglesias nice underhand flip to Infante and Infante able to turn it over. So that was Taylor made and now here comes Alex Gordon with the runner at third and two outs. Only 156 this year against Tigers pitching. And down the middle it comes a fastball in 95 0 and 1. Most of the fastballs that Sanchez has thrown his last few starts, and really since coming off the disabled list, have been mid 90s fastballs. Well, that was the beauty of a pitch right there in 95. Can't locate it any better. Right at the knees, outside corner, and now all of a sudden it's 0 2 on Gordon. Trying to pick up Getz here with two outs at third, just underway at the ballpark. The 0 2. Ball high. Sanchez threw one up there, but Gordon would not chase it. Salvador Perez is waiting on deck. Here's the one two. In the air to shallow right field. Hunter coming out, gonna drop. Base hit. Torrey was playing deep in right, started back momentarily, and that's a two out RBI single. Four straight fastballs to Gordon. The last one was up and in, and he just muscled the ball into right field. And when a guy has power as an outfielder, your first step naturally is going to be back, and Torrey just couldn't get in to prevent Gordon from getting his 62nd RBI of the season. So the Royals take advantage with two outs. They lead 1 0, and ball one to Salvador Perez. 274 batter this year, 286 versus Tigers pitching. You don't really think of Gordon as a base stealer, but he has eight in ten tries this year. Everybody up and down their lineup runs, with the exception of uh, Billy Butler. Perez was just two for 12 in the completed series against the Marlins. And he looks at a ball up and in. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the 2 0. Told you that uh, Kansas City paces the American League with 96 steals. Boston second with 93. Runner goes. Here comes the throw from Pena. Not nearly in time. Stolen base. Make that 97. And uh, Sanchez has got to do a better job of making sure uh, Gordon doesn't get that walking lead that he just got right here. Pena had no shot.
So nine out of 11 now for Gordon. He's in scoring position. And Perez way ahead in the count. Three balls, one strike. He is also their best hitter uh, with runners in scoring position. 349 batting average for Perez. And Sanchez puts him aboard with ball four. And that'll leave runners at first and second now for the newly acquired Justin Maxwell. Royals have been somewhat active here as we head toward the end of August. They picked up Maxwell. They traded for Bonifacio, Jamie Carroll. As you see, Sanchez now has thrown 26 in this first inning. Dayton Moore, their general manager, doing everything that he possibly can do to stay within the uh, payroll constraints that he has as a general manager to put a really good team on the field. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. See, Bonifacio is acquired from the Jays, Carroll from the Twins, Kane is on the DL, and uh, Maxwell coming over from the Astros. Tejada is also on the DL. He's done for the year. Kane was doing a lot of damage against the Tigers uh, this year on both sides of the ball offensively. And he was making spectacular plays in center field. They are also without Mike Moustakis, who is not on the DL, but has missed the last couple of games. 0 and 1 on Maxwell. Fouled away 0 and 2. So a lengthy inning here for Sanchez. Not exactly the way he wanted to start this frame, but trying to get out of here with just one run allowed. Gordon in second base and Perez the runner at first. 0 2 on Maxwell the former Houston Astro. And a foul tip right at home plate. There's Bonifacio waiting on deck. Back to back newcomers in their lineup. Bonifacio can really run. Which fits in nicely with what the Royals do. Sanchez, meanwhile, trying to take care of Maxwell here with two outs in the first. And a soft line drive caught by Miguel Cabrera to end the inning. One run, three hits, two left. Here come the Tigers in the bottom of the first. In favor of the Royals, Torrey Hunter, the only uh, starter in the outfield tonight, will uh, be in the lineup again for the Tigers. Their lineup presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Dirks, then Torrey, and then Cabrera. It's a night off for Austin Jackson. Prince Fielder at first, Martinez the DH. Don Kelly will replace A.J. in center field. You've got the Infante, Pena, and Iglesias. Rounding out the Detroit starting lineup, and they are facing the right-handed offerings of 
Jeremy Guthrie. Jeremy Guthrie comes in with 12 wins, 8 losses in ERA, just a shade over 4, but he has had a tremendous amount of success against the Tigers since he has put on that Kansas City Royals uniform. He's got all four pitches. He can command all four. Fastball, curve, slider, and a changeup velocity, probably 93 to 95. So the steady veteran is ready to go to work. Andy Dirks in the leadoff slot tonight. He looks at a strike. And Guthrie misses that time. One ball and one strike. Field line that'll drop base hit and Dirks leads it off with a single a good start Dirks real good numbers against uh, a Guthrie updated now 353 for Andy here is Tory Hunter Batting 306. Torrey had 10 hits on the road trip. And he looks at strike one from the right hander Guthrie. Another guy that's done pretty good work against Guthrie is Torrey Hunter, 10 for 32. One of the reasons why Austin not playing today, his numbers aren't very good against Jeremy Guthrie. That is popped up. Right side of the infield foul ground Hosmer is under it and Hunter is out one gone. Tim Hortons will sponsor the Kansas City Royals starting defensive alignment this evening in the outfield they have Alex Gordon they have Dyson they have Maxwell in the infield the newly acquired Bonifacio Escobar and gets and Hosmer Salvador Perez is their catcher and he's a good one he made the all star team this year for the first time in his big league career. So with one out here is Miguel Cabrera. 360 batting average for Cabrera batting 259 this year against the Royals. Casey's done a pretty good job of holding Cabrera and uh, Prince and Victor in check this year. There's ball one. The numbers against Guthrie though are much different 11 for 32 for Miguel. With three home runs. The 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Cabrera, three out of four in that series against Chicago. High, towering fly ball, right center field. Got to stay in the ballpark, though. Maxwell hauls it in. Dirks has to hustle back. Miggy just got under that one, and there are two gone. Well, anytime Miggy hits a ball in the air and it sounds loud, you just think it's going. That's how good he's going these days. No question. Six home runs on the 10 game road trip. Here's Prince. Batting 262, 17 long balls this year. And ball one as he stays away. Fielder playing in game number 463 consecutively. The longest. Current active streak and boy the numbers against Guthrie 467 all these guys have great numbers against Guthrie but yet he wins all the time against him. How's that working out. Uh, I don't, yeah I don't get it. Oh there's a high drive. That's in the deep right center field that ball is hit well it is up there and gone. It's a home run for Prince a two run shot. That is the Prince's first home run in a long long time. And he made up for it. That thing went a long, long way. Field 
Wilder with a majestic towering two run shot. Got a little breaking ball that was down in Prince's happy zone. Look at that concentration. The head is down and of course he's got some very strong legs and that base is under control and when you have your lower half underneath you like that boy you can get maximum bat speed. Boy Ned Yost the manager of Kansas City Royals has seen Prince Fielder do that a lot. And he was Prince's first manager when Prince made his major league debut with the Milwaukee Brewers. July the 24th against the White Sox and John Danks a left hander the last home run for Prince Fielder there's a slicing liner to left and it's caught by Gordon that'll end the inning however the Prince flashing a smile with a two run shot. For three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow, and you will get yourself a free small order of curly fries. And we are one third of the way there. The home run by Prince Fielder in the first inning blues continue for the Royals. They've given up a lot of runs in the first inning this year, and they have fallen behind to the Tigers now two to one. They got a great pitching staff, but for whatever reason, even though they have some really good starters, they have a difficult time of getting out of that. Uh, first inning without getting touched up. Meanwhile, Bonifacio slices a single to left field. Leadoff man is on again for the Royals. If you're Sanchez now, you pretty much have to change your game plan uh, midway through the game. Well, actually, it's not midway through the game. We're only in the second inning, but they have three hits the opposite way already out of the left handers. Apparently, they're looking out over the plate to do that. So you have to crowd some of these left handers inside, make them uncomfortable, and then you can get back outside with the pitch that you really want to get them out with. Hannibal had himself a 30 pitch first inning, so he is hopeful of a much shorter second inning. Escobar batting 246. 41 RBIs this year. Runner goes. Here comes the throw from Pena. Not in time. Another steal. It's going to be a track meet here today, buddy. They're, uh, they're not wasting any time, are they? None. Here's today's high speed stat is brought to you by Charter Internet with the addition of Bonifacio and they already have Escobar. They have Dyson uh, since the beginning of the 2011 season. This is how many bases they've stolen. How many times they've been caught in that percentage is outstanding. They're successful 83 percent of the time. Well tip into the glove one ball and one strike. You can't sleep on Bonifacio at second base either. He is two of two. In steals of third this year in 15 in his career. Lead off single here in the second. Tigers lead 2 1 on the fielder, Homer. Now the 1 1. Showing bunt, strike called. Bonifacio played pretty well for the Marlins. 
uh, before he got traded to Toronto, but he did not play well uh, in Toronto at all, and that's why he found himself uh, pretty much expendable uh, this year for the Toronto Blue Jays. He batted only 218 for the Jays prior to the trade that brought him over. The one two. Escobar protecting and sending that one back into the seats. Ned Yosa said before the game today that Bonifacio can play some shortstop. He can play third. He can play second. He can play outfield. He gives them a, a well rounded, good athletic player. Stole 40 bases just a couple of years ago with the Marlins. One and two on Alcides Escobar. Two balls, two strikes. Last time we saw Escobar, he was scuffling. Yeah, but he's gotten hot. He's been performing well. Yeah, Escobar just had a 10 game hitting streak come to an end yesterday. Sanchez early trouble giving up a run in the first leadoff single and a steal here in the second. Three and two. It's been a good stretch for Anibal Sanchez. He has gone eight of his last nine starts allowing two earned runs or fewer. Awfully stingy. In fact in his last two starts he gave up four hits in each start. That's it. Line right to the third baseman Cabrera. Ball hit hard and straight at him. One out. Yeah, Mickey didn't have to move for this one. It'll bring up Gerard Dyson, the number nine hitter. You could expect that these Royals know that Miguel is not moving very well down at third base these days, and a lot of their guys that can really run will bunt toward him, trying to force him into making a play. As Dyson tried to do there, and he and Miggy now. He joined with Dyson. <laughs> Miggy, I got you. Come on. Bring it on, <laughs> Miggy said. <laughs> He better be careful what he wishes for. The 0 1. No sign of it there inside. One ball, one strike. That's a good pitch. He needs to do a little bit more of that against his left handers because they're looking to slap everything to left field. Bouncing ball to short. Bonifacio. Going to put on the brakes and head back to second base. Dyson is out, two gone. Iglesias had to uh, get rid of that baseball in a hurry with the speed of Dyson. He entertained the thought of trying to get uh, Bonifacio out because he was about seven steps off that bag. Yeah, but then he thought better of it, and then when he got rid of it, he had to get put a little bit on it because they got some rabbits on this squad. Here is Chris Getz, and he looks at a ball. We mentioned uh, Sanchez had a 30 pitch first inning. The last time he had an inning that lasted that long, at least 30 pitches, you got to go back to May 18th in a start against Texas. Round ball to second. Should get him out of the inning. Infante throws him out. Nicely done by Anibal.
Presented by the Detroit Tigers, Eminem McFlurry only at McDonald's. Using your cell phone, text Tigers, then a space, and then the player's uniform number to 37338. It is as simple as that. Prince Fielder, an early candidate with a two run shot. Tigers lead two to one. Don Kelly playing center field tonight. Looks at strike one from Guthrie. Guthrie will give up a few uh, long balls. He has given up now 24 home runs this season, and he pitches in a pretty uh, pitcher friendly ballpark. One ball, one strike on Kelly. Guthrie was acquired last year from the Rockies. They gave up Jonathan Sanchez to get him, and he has really done well since coming over back to the American League. Guthrie has plenty of experience in this league, having pitched for Baltimore for five years. 34 years of age out of Roseburg, Oregon. Well, the 2-1. Two, 2-2 two two on Don Kelly. Pitched so well last year after they acquired him from the Colorado Rockies. Dayton Moore, their general manager, gave him a three-year contract. Now this offseason, Guthrie was a free agent. 2-2, two two, the count stays. Well, the Royals last year after they got Guthrie, they were 10 and 4 in his starts. And then Yost to the offseason watched the Royals retool the pitching rotation. James Shields coming over. There's a drive to center field on a line, base hit. Don Kelly starts off the second with a base hit. We'll bring up Infante. I don't know if many of you heard this, but Infante had three hits on uh, what day was that? A couple days ago in Chicago, and they gave Alexi Ramirez an air, which I thought at the time should have been a hit. They have now changed that, so Omar now had six hits in his last two games. So that was a four hit game then, then? Four hit game that night. Omar takes strike one. Let me see. Today is what? Thursday? It is. So that would have been uh, Tuesday? what Tuesday. Yeah. You lose track of days. I'm sorry. Right. You know what the date today is? It's Kansas City. That was, that's what the date is. I'll go with that. <laughs> that's what we do in baseball. Just who are we playing tonight? Ooh, we just got back. Second straight frame. The Tigers have a leadoff single. Omar 29 RBIs. Rolled foul. Omar really hasn't missed a beat. He's spending a month on the disabled list. Had a couple different uh, rehab stints down in the minor leagues. One was cut short because the ankle wasn't quite ready. Then he went back down there and played a couple games, and now he's back at his familiar spot at second base. The 0 2 outside, 1 2. A lot of times you can tell guys when they come back from injuries if they're still not 100%. We haven't seen any evidence of that on the field. And even Omar walking out of the ballpark last night in Chicago to the team bus looked fine. I mean, he looks like he uh, he's good to go. Now the one two. Chopper to the shortstop. Cut off at third by Bonifacio. And Infante is out. Advance the runner to second. Kelly moves up. One on one out for the hot swinging Brian Pena. He had a 480 road trip. So while Alex Avila remains on the concussion list, Pena filling in nicely. And his average now for the season up to 306. Pena coming in with 20 RBIs. He had 25 all of last season with KC. Ryan is nine for his last 17 at bats. And he looks at a ball inside, 1 1. It's 
Two runs on three Detroit hits in this game. A run on four hits, but three left for KC. Lifted in the air to left. Gordon is on the move. And Kelly will retreat. Two gone. Well, the Tigers closed their series with the Royals this Sunday at 108, and it's Sunday Kids Day. All kids 14 and under receive a back to school pencil set. Call 866 66 Tiger or visit Tigers.com. Two down now. Here is Jose Iglesias. Eight hits on the road trip for Jose. Strike one on the Tiger shortstop. Just one for nine in the series just completed against the Chicago White Sox. Tigers dropped two out of three there, but still won six of ten on the road trip. One ball, one strike. It's uncanny this year how close these games have been between the Tigers and the Royals. The Royals have won five of the eight between the two clubs, but just about all of them have been decided by one or two runs. Really, it's been only one blowout in the series. Royals are getting better yeah, because the last few years the Tigers have just flat out dominated the Kansas City Royals. Chopper left side of the infield. Bonifacio scoops it up, and Iglesias is out. That'll be it for the Tigers. No runs in a hit. One left. Tigers baseball presented by Del Tire. Which three players have more hits than Eric Hosmer who has 54 since July the 1st Hosmer has been hot since the beginning of July there have been three other players that have had more hits since the start of July so that is your trivia question tonight think about that there is a ball outside to Hosmer Butler and then Gordon here in the top of the third Tigers lead two to one. Hosmer takes a strike one one. It appears that Eric Hosmer from a, uh, a batting average power standpoint benefited the most from uh, George Brett when he spent two months as their hitting coach. Bouncing ball to second and Fonte will throw him out. Because his numbers got drastically better after Brett uh, took over. George Brett now back upstairs in the Kansas City uh, Royals front office. Didn't last very long, but it seemed like Brett put his imprint on a few of the guys there. He sure did. 
And as uh, George was saying when we were in Kansas City last time, it's nothing mechanical that he did with uh, players or the mental aspect of the game. And George played for a, a lot of years at a very high level. Owen won the count on Billy Butler. He drives one to center field. Don Kelly cruising back. And two quick outs. It is time now for a game break as we check in with Mickey York. All right, Mick. Well, despite that win today from St. Louis, I think people now are realizing that Pittsburgh is probably here to stay for the rest of the year. We saw Pittsburgh in four games this year, and they played really good against the Tigers. Their pitching was outstanding. There's a chopper hit to the right side, and Sanchez covers. That's going to be an easy one, two, three, third. Runs on the completed road trip, but watch his feet. He lands his foot in a different spot every single time. That time he opened up against Mariano. That was on Friday night. He also homered against Mariano on Sunday. Take a look at the foot. Step straight on this one. And then yesterday he homered against Danks. He didn't even pick the foot up. So what I'm trying to illustrate for you is the fact that Miguel does things in that batter's box that no player does in this day and age. Not only does he hit the ball to right field with a lot of power, but he changes and varies where he steps and where he stands, whether he picks it up or puts it down, depending on who that pitcher is that evening. He'll bat third here in the third as Sandy Dirks leads it off. And I can't think of anybody else that has the ability to do that. And he had a single in the first inning, scored a run. Drives this one in the gap in right center. That's going to be a two hit night. This is extra bases. Andy on his way to second will pull in with a leadoff double. Two for two for Dirks in that leadoff spot. Good fastball there by Guthrie and that real short quick compact swing by Andy Dirks. Uh, Dirks if he can continue to do that. Uh, that batting average will most definitely will perk up for him. Now Torrey who popped up his first time. Showing bunt ball one outside. Torrey knows he has a job to do and that's at least get Andy Dirks over to third base. So it really doesn't matter how you get it done whether you bunt or whether you drive it in that direction. Torrey just wants to get it done. One ball one strike. 
Jackson getting the night off tonight. Uh, Jim Leland said Tory Hunter will get the night off on Saturday. That is his scheduled day off. Leland's done a pretty good job and has over the years of scheduling guys and looking ahead as to when they should take their breaks. He said he had days off scheduled for several of the guys. Bouncer back to the mound. Uh oh, Dirk's caught between second and third. They'll run him down. Bonifacio will apply the tag. Throw back to first. Got him. Boy. Both runners are out as Hunter rounded the bag at first in a really heads up play by Bonifacio. Well, first and foremost, Andy Dirk should not have tried to get to third base when the ball's hit back to the pitcher. You have to make Torrey Hunter do his job, which he didn't do there. And then to add insult to injury, uh, Torrey Hunter tried to get down to second base. He rounded the bag too far. Bonifacio heads up, threw back, got him out. One, four, five, three on that put out, that double play. And Miggy with a big rip, 0 and 1. Base is empty, so the leadoff double not only is erased, but so is Hunter. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. It's one more look by Torrey, knowing that. Uh, Andy Dirks and it was hoping that Andy Dirks was going to stay in that pickle a little bit longer. He was going to try to advance to second base. Did he tag him? Nope, he didn't. Ball clearly beat him there. Yeah, but he didn't tag him. No, he didn't. James Hoy didn't see it. Not a fan of that ball. 0 oh 2. And Cabrera takes low and away. One ball, two strikes. Two out, nobody on. Mickey fly to right field his first time up. Leading the American League with 153 hits. And many of them dramatic. 38 home runs. Low and away, 2 2. Is there a part of you that felt like Miguel was trying to hit those home runs on the road knowing how big this ballpark is and knowing he has to take advantage of all his at bats on the road with Davis still leading the American League in home runs probably. Yeah I, I don't think that's out of the question. Here's Escobar deep at short and down he goes and the inning is over no runs a hit nobody left let's go to the fourth. Uh, seemed pretty close. Well, he didn't touch him. Not yeah. at all. Tory, he did not touch Tory. But he was called out. Now uh, Hunter had a little conversation with James Hoy, saying, "I don't think he tagged me." And uh, that is a play that perhaps in the future may be reviewable. As uh, Major League Baseball is considering expanding their replay, 
to beyond home runs. Don't know if that would be a play that would fall under the category of reviewable. There's a ground ball to short. Iglesias got in front of it. And he throws him out. One away. But anyway, here's uh, what is proposed by Major League Baseball in the review system. Uh, it's still got a pass with a 75% vote, but managers would be allowed one challenge in the first six innings and two more from the seventh inning till the end of the game. Now, uh, I heard Bud Selig talking today in an interview saying that most of these challenges would be plays down the lines, left and right field lines, fair or foul, or trapped balls. So I don't know that that play there would fall into that category. But they certainly, Rod, I think, are looking into taking advantage of all this technology we have. Now. I also heard Tony Larusa say that uh, most managers weren't in favor of this, but really, baseball feels like it's best for them to do this to make sure that uh, that no bad calls really make a difference in games that are very meaningful. Justin Maxwell, the batter here against Sanchez in a 2-1 ball game. Jim Leland was asked his. Impression of uh, the upcoming vote, what he thought about those new rules. And he really wasn't sure yet how he felt because he wanted to get all the information before he gave his opinion. But, uh, you know, I, th I think he's been one that in the past has been in favor of the balls that are hit down the line, fair or foul. Because those have been impactful in some postseason games. Here's the 2 1. I think one of the things you have to worry about, though, Rod, is affecting the pace of the game, and that's something uh, Bud Selig talked about as well today. I think uh, once they finally uh, get it going and once they implement it, uh, that will probably be the next order of business. How do we do it efficiently uh, without slowing down the pace of the game? Two and two on Maxwell. Sanchez had a six pitch third, and that is bounced. Foul. 2 2 the count stays. And you jumped on it just in case it remained fair. You know, uh, Brian playing with a little bit more energy here tonight against his former club. Not that he doesn't always play well, but you always like to go up against your former teammates. You always want to do well, contrary to what most players will tell you. Well, they've been running on him tonight. They have a couple of steals against him. Grounded foul. One thing Jim's going to have to do in this uh, five game series is going to help out, have to help out Pena and help out Brian Holiday, uh, depending on when Brian does catch. He'll catch one of the games tomorrow for sure. He's going to have to call a couple of pitch outs. At least make these Royals think twice about running at will. Drill to left center field. It's going to drop. Base hit. Maxwell taking an aggressive turn. Here he comes. And he's in there. Flopping into second base with a double. He is a big boy. He is about 6'5, 220. 11th double of the season. Started with the Houston Astros. Just came over to the Kansas City Royals. And he was thinking two uh, out of the batter's box. Once he hit that ball, he made the turn. And he takes those long strides. So the tying run now is in scoring position. 2 1 Detroit. It's a one out double by Maxwell. Bonifacio looks at ball one. I thought a guy like this playing on the turf in Toronto would really blossom and take off. But uh, we gave you his numbers only 218 with the Blue Jays this year. That whole team pretty much disappointing. I have a couple guys that are getting it done, but they. Have only won 55 games this year, and they're 16 games out of first place. And that's a team that a lot of experts pick to be a whole lot better this year with all the acquisitions they made in the offseason. And boy, did they retool. There's a strike call, two and one. Would not be shocked if it wouldn't take a year before all the new faces they put in their clubhouse kind of gel together. That's a little bit high, and the count on Bonifacio now is three and one. Here are those numbers in the East Toronto at 55 65, Boston leading the way over Tampa. Swing and a miss. 
Did you see what uh, Soriano did to the uh, Los Angeles Angels the last three days? I did. He had 14 RBIs in three games. Torched him. Just torched him, and he did not look good at all against the Tigers. No, nope. he struck out a lot. Feasted on that Angels pitch. Three and two. Runner goes. Ground ball to first, right at Prince. Maxwell will get the third. There are two outs. Speaking of Soriano, he is part of our news and notes around the major leagues. Diamondbacks with three consecutive walk-off wins against the Orioles. How do the Los Angeles Dodgers not make the MLB news and notes? We're gonna have to have a conversation about that. There's only so much space, I suppose. We put Josh Johnson and Kobe Rasmus up there. Uh, you had a chance to bring this up in our pregame meetings, but you did not. Must have slipped by there or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boys. <laughs> Here is Escobar. <laughs> Want to know the count on Alcides. He lined out to the third baseman his first time up. Tigers took the lead on the home run by Prince Fielder in the first. And Sanchez trying to hold on to that lead. One ball, one strike out on Cetus Escobar. Swing and a miss. One and two. Torrey Hunter and both Don Kelly uh, playing very shallow at their respective positions. And the reason for that is Escobar, while he's been hot, he's been getting a lot of base hits to right field. Not a lot of power in that direction, but he'll get a base hit in that direction. Two and two. Escobar with a 10 game hitting streak that came to an end yesterday. And he just completed a homestand that the Royals had, in which he went 485 on that homestand. You get an idea of how shallow Torrey is playing. Look how much real estate is behind him. Did he go? Negative. James Hoy said he held up. Now it's three and two. Dyson waiting on deck. And the 3 2. Little chopper to third. Miguel on the charge. Escobar is out, and the threat is over. No runs, a one on double is stranded. Courtesy of Prince Field, who homered off of Jeremy Guthrie in the first inning. Prince got himself an 80 mile per hour curveball and killed it to right center field. What's most fascinating about this is it left his bat at a speed of about 103, and Guthrie didn't help him at all. 103. 
that's got to be one of the highest ratings we've had this year. Close to it. I think we've seen 105 uh, a couple times. Miggy had a 105, I believe, and I know Albert Pujols had a 105 that I remember. Man. Here is Prince. And a wave and a miss, 0-1. First pitch change up that time. Tigers have a lot of hitters that are very aggressive on first pitches. Miguel is. Prince is. Victor, you can't sneak a first pitch fastball by these guys. The home run that Fielder hit back in the first inning not only gave the Tigers a two to one lead, but it was also extending Fielder's hitting streak. He's now hit safely in nine straight. 13 hits on the road trip for the Prince. He fought that one off back out of play 0 and 2. Fielder now with 83 RBIs. Little pop up to the second baseman to the grass goes Getz. Ned Yost, the manager of the uh, uh, Kansas City Royals, was uh, talking to Shannon Hogan before the game and talking about how dangerous this Tigers lineup is. He said one through six. And with Jackson and Hunter and Prince and Biggie, and Victor, they are awfully dangerous. And I'm sure there are uh, quite a few managers around Major League Baseball that would echo those sentiments. The Royals came into this series having won seven of their previous eight. They would have won eight series in a row coming into this one had they been able to. Beat Miami yesterday. The uh, Marlins took two out of three. You have to give their uh, general manager a lot of credit, Dayton Moore, uh, because when we were in Kansas City uh, right after the All Star break, there was a lot of talk about them moving Irvin Santana, who was a free agent after this year, but they started playing some good baseball. And then all of a sudden he said, you know what? We can't mess this up. We're going to hold on to Santana, play it out. And then he added some more pieces. And since the All Star break, Royals are 19 and 7. There's the Dodgers, 23 and 3 since the break. Dodgers are white hot right now. There's a strike call. I wonder if part of that decision to hang on to Santana had to do with, well, you know what? They traded Will Myers in the offseason to get James Shields. So they're trading away one of their big stud prospects. So they needed to give Santana and the rest of the team an opportunity here in the second half. It would have sent a bad message, uh, not only to the guys in the clubhouse. That's a fair ball. Left field line. On its way to second, Martinez in with a double. Not only would it have been a bad message for the guys in the clubhouse, but it would have been a bad message to the fans, especially with the team playing so well. Victor just continues to get it done. It really doesn't matter which side he's swinging the bat from, left-handed or right-handed. That was a nice little tailing. Two seam fastball away from Victor, but somehow uh, he was able to get bat on it and slice it right down that third baseline. Bonifacio was well off uh, the the bases. Hey, good job by the fans down there pulling back. Although uh, he got a double anyway, wasn't going to get a triple out of that. But still, there's a strike called on Don Kelly. So if you're Martinez now, you've got yourself a nine game hit streak. After hitting 400 on the road trip, Tigers trying to get another run in. Kelly fouls it back 0 2. Kelly in the sixth spot in this one here tonight with uh, Dirks batting in the leadoff spot, Jackson getting the evening off. It appears that that uh, sixth slot is going to be rotating it the entire season. It's a spot that Johnny Peralta held down on a nightly basis. Uh, but with Peralta serving that 50 game suspension, and Jim didn't want to mess with the rest of the lineup, so he just kind of rotates it. When Kelly is out on strikes, two gone. What about Infante for that sixth spot? What do you think about that? He would provide some protection for Victor Martinez as Victor starts to heat up, and when Victor does get uh, up there in. Runners in scoring position situations, they're going to walk him. So it'd be nice to have a guy with a proven track record like Infante batting sixth. Omar batting in the seventh slot here tonight. He bounced out back in the second. 
ball one. Yet another tight one between these two teams. 2 1 is our score here in the fourth. Both sides with five hits. The Royals have left four men on base. The Tigers have stranded one. Ball two. And Omar Infante. Yeah, this much we do know about Omar. If uh, Guthrie decides to throw him a fastball here in this 2 0 count, Omar's going to get a really good swing at it. Doesn't take big swings, just aggressive, great hand eye coordination. Now it's three balls, no strikes. Brian Pena waiting on deck. Royals got a run in the first. Tigers answered with two on the Prince Fielder homer. And a strike on the outer edge. Infante thought he had himself a walk. Guthrie, a former first round pick of the Cleveland Indians way back in the 2002 season. Had some pretty good years with the Orioles. In fact, he won 47 games in five seasons with Baltimore. And another strike as again Infante was headed to first base. And that's back to back pitches now. Every pitch that uh, Guthrie has tried to execute against Infante has been on the outer thirds of home plate. John Hirschbeck, our home plate umpire tonight, calling Infante back on two really good pitches. The 3 2. Ground ball left side, Bonifacio. Infante is out as Hosmer crosses the bag, and nothing comes of the one out double. Fan Express yesterday as the girls mixed and mingled with fans at 24 Seconds Bar and Grill in Berkeley. Today they took the Ford Rouge factory tour in Dearborn. The Fox Sports girls road trip continues to head across the country and kick off Fox Sports 1. America's new sports network premiering on Saturday. It's just a couple of days away. Speaking of uh, Fox Sports girls, the uh, we have a new one here in Detroit. Did you know that? Yeah, I was watching the pregame show today with Justin White. Her name is uh, Angela, and you know what school she went to, too, don't you? She's a Spartan. That's all I needed to hear. You had something to do with it. <laughs> no, no, honestly, I didn't. I have no pull in that regard. You got on that committee after yeah. all. There is no committee. At least not that I know of. She just happened to go to Michigan State. Good taste. Jared Dyson leading it off. And it's bunted foul. It's the second time uh, in this game already that uh, Dyson has attempted to bunt down in Cabrera's direction. 
Dyson grounded out his first time up. Sanchez had a 30 pitch first, yet through it all, gave up just the one run, and uh, so far that's all he's given up. Pulled in the air to right field. Torrey got turned around, but he'll get there. And Dyson can't make no money in the air. He's got to use his legs. Ground balls, line drives is you know, the best approach for him. I don't think anybody has as much fun as uh, Hunter in playing. <laughs> one out, and here is Chris Getz. He takes strike one. Single ground out for Getz, the former Gross Point South Blue Devil and Michigan Wolverine. Missed it low and in. One ball, one strike. Chris Getz went to Michigan and played there in 04 and 05, was all Big Ten both of those seasons. Here's the 1 1. Outside, two balls, one strike on Getz. Gross Point, Michigan. 29 years old now, Chris Getz. Line drive, base hit, left field. One out single here in the fifth. Sanchez is going to have to do a little bit better time helping Pena out. Now they have already stolen two bases this evening. They came in with 96 stolen bases as a team, which leads the major leagues. Getz has the ability to run. He's 10 out of 12. Hosmer stands in with one on one out. And it's the sixth hit of the game for KC. The Tigers have five. Hosmer hitting in an ideal spot that number two slot. Because whoever is leading off for the uh, Kansas City Royals has some speed. Which means you're going to get a lot of fastballs. Brian at 20% this year. And a strike called on Hosmer. Might not be a bad time to pitch out here. If uh, you're Jim and you're convinced that Getz is going to try to steal the third bat bag of the evening for his squad. Well, I'm sure he had the confidence that Sanchez doesn't walk too many. Great point. You know he's he's not going to get himself in trouble control wise. It's a big okay. lead for Getz. Is there one clue when you're picking when to pitch out that might be at the top of the list? Is it mostly count? A lot of times it's count, and a lot of times it's conviction, and knowing the Royals' game, and a lot of times you do it just to make them think about. Not running. Here's a pop up. Who's going to take it? Pena, tough play. Cradles it with Sanchez at his side. That's a play right there where Sanchez probably could have caught it and made it look a little easier than Brian Pena uh, made it look. But in baseball, uh, pitchers just kind of get out of the way. Certainly was uh, more of a difficult play for Pena over the shoulder. Two gone. That'll bring up Billy Butler. Who so far tonight has hit into a double play and is flying to center. 0 for 2. Runner goes. Big jump. Forget about it. Yeah, you know, Pena had no chance, so he just held on to the baseball. Third stolen base of the night for Casey. So now Butler a chance to drive in a run. Swing and a miss. The most bases that uh, Kansas City has stolen in the game this year is four. And they already have three. And they stole those four bases against the Oakland Athletics. 
Butler came in batting 352 since the All-Star break. 61 RBIs. Outside, one ball, two strikes. And former All-Star Billy Butler hit for a lot of power last year, drove in 100 runs for the first time in his career, and he also made an All-Star team in 2012. He was born to hit. Pena smothers it. Gets thought about going to third. And now it's two and two. Butler has always hit ever since coming to the big leagues. The problem is finding him a position defensively, and he's pretty much been a designated hitter. But boy, can he hit. Eight game hitting streak right now. Swing and a miss, and Sanchez strikes him out. So again, the Royals threaten do not score. They leave a man at second, and Tigers baseball tonight is presented by Bell Tide. Tonight's broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to U.S. Armed Forces, serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. We welcome you all. It's been a good one here tonight. The Tigers up by a run. Brian Pena leads it off and takes strike one. For the Tigers, Pena, Iglesias, and then Dirks facing Jeremy Guthrie. There's a ball inside and low. One ball, one strike on Pena. Ryan flied out his first time up. Five game hit streak for the Tigers catcher. Here's the 1 1 offering. Stroke to left field. There's a base hit and a six game hitting streak. I'd say that Brian Payne uh, swinging that bat a whole lot better than many thought he was uh, he would when they made the uh, deal to bring him over to the Tigers known as a defensive catcher. But boy he's been hot lately. Well here we are in August mid August and he's sitting over 300. Now Iglesias. Drops down a bunt. But it's right back to Guthrie who fires to second and he'll get the force. That's a good idea by Iglesias who is clearly bunting for a base hit there. But he didn't get it far enough down the line. You can't allow the pitcher uh, to field this ball, especially with Brian Pena running from first base. If he gets it down the line and he makes Bonifacio field it, he may be out at first base, but Pena would be in scoring position. 
Here's Andy Dirks. Did you realize the Tigers have not lost a game here since July 13th? That was when Max lost to the Texas Rangers. They won nine straight games right here at Comerica Park. It's the first I've heard of it. That's good. Here's the ball low. Didn't uh, really take time to look at what they had done recently at home. I know the Tigers overall have been good at home this year. And they swept that last homestand, 8 and 0 oh, in that homestand, and they had eight sellouts. Might have one here tonight. Dirks rips one fair down the first base line. It's his third hit of the game. Iglesias off to the races, coming to third. They're going to stop in there. And it's a two base hit for Andy Dirks, who is three for three. When you're the third base coach and you're Tom Brookins, you have to be very careful when you decide to send a base runner home, even though Iglesias has some good speed as he takes off from first base. Once he gets to third base, Brookins comes down the line, but he's able to read it. He also knows Hunter's coming up. He also knows Miguel is coming up. Therefore, he held Iglesias up. He didn't want him to run into an out at home plate. Wise call, second and third now. One out for Torrey Hunter. Infield coming in for the Royals. And a ball outside, 1 0. Torrey has a pop up, and he hit into that double play that went 1 4 5 3 back in the third inning. Batting 3 0 5, trying to add to the Tigers' 2 1 lead. Right back up the middle of the center. That's a base hit. Iglesias scores. Dirks will stop at third, and Torrey gets it done. 61st RBI for Hunter. This ball right here absolutely scorched right past Jeremy Guthrie. A little two seam fastball that stayed up and right over the heart of the dish. Three to one in favor of the Tigers. Now they have Cabrera scrolling in. And the crowd getting into it. And Miggy fouls it back 0 1. And Jim Leland, who has uh, been in baseball, then most of us have been in this ballpark here tonight, said what Miguel Cabrera is doing right now is simply amazing. He's never seen anything like it. Pretty much indescribable, really. As hard as we try on a nightly basis. The 0 1. Ball high, one ball, one strike. Jim also shed a little light on the Miggy injury, talking about the stomach and also uh, the hip flexor. He said that's really not bothering him as much as the left leg. A couple of balls he hit off his leg in that one heroic at bat against Mariano Rivera last Friday night. Off his shin, off his knee. The 1 1 pitch. Checked it. 2 and 1. Cabrera tonight is 0 for 2. Fly ball on the ground out. He is batting with runners at first and third. One out, a run in. Swing and a miss. Two and two. 94 up around the letters. Threw it right by Miggy. Fielder waiting on deck. So Guthrie has had to work his way through the middle of this lineup. Fouled away. That one came to eat. It was pretty close too. And yeah, was probably a couple of feet from our booth. Well, from you at least. Two and two. What you need to stick your hand out there and try and catch it. No, thank you. In the air, shallow center. Dyson, it's going to drop. Base hit. Yeah. 
RBI for Cabrera. Did Dyson get fooled that much by the powerful swing of Miguel Cabrera? Apparently so. He took a, a step back and you figured his speed would make up for it, but it didn't. Just one step back. Let's see. Tigers will take that though. Good fastball by Guthrie crowded Miggy. When Miggy takes a swing, most of the time you do go back because the ball is going to reach you, but Dyson. Took a couple steps back, couldn't recover. Miggy with another hit, and another RBI. And that is nine Tigers hits now. It's four to one. 115 driven in now for Cabrera, and here is Prince Fielder. Still only one out. And a ground ball hit to the right side. Nice play by Getz. They will get Fielder. Runners advance. Hunter to third and Cabrera to second. Now Victor Martinez. Victor a double and a line out. Well they have a base open right now and Salvador Perez is out there to remind Jeremy Guthrie of that fact. Victor has been sizzling hot since the calendar turned to July and they don't want Victor to beat him right here in this situation. Guthrie will throw from the windup with men at second and third. Victor right now a nine game hitting streak. Fastball missed away 1-0. Victor over his last 48 games hitting in a 361 clip which has continued to pump his average up. It's at 284 now. And you're clearly staying away from him. two and all the count. It's amazing the uh, amount of numbers that he is uh, increasing the batting average in the last month. Wildered in the 215, 220 range the first month and a half, two months of the year. Now the 2 0. A little roller hit toward first base. Hosmer, pitch recovery, side retired. However, the Tigers get two, and we go to the sixth. By Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Ram trucks now get a great summer deal on a Ram truck at the Ram Summer Clearance Event. And by Handy Foil Eco Foil, out of the oven and to the party without a worry.
Nice night here at the ballpark as we check out our Comerica Bank game summary. Prince Fielder, two run shot in the first inning. Sanchez has pitched good baseball tonight, and Dirk's having a big night. He's three for three with a couple of doubles. Two runs scored. And you total it all up, and the Tigers have themselves a four to one lead in front of yet another big crowd here at the ballpark. It's a strike called on Alex Gordon. One out of two tonight, RBI single. Back in the first, responsible for their only run. Flared back out of play 0 2. Tigers pitchers have done a marvelous job against Gordon all season long. They speed the bat up with fastballs up in the zone, like that last pitch that Sanchez threw. And then they feature real good changeups. All the Tigers starters have outstanding changeups. There he is. Swing and a miss. And there he goes. Hello, Dolly. See Sanchez now with two strikeouts. Look at this pitch. Seventy-two miles an hour had Gordon way out in front. Sanchez will go anywhere from seventy-two all the way up to ninety-seven miles an hour with his fastball. That one in 94, 0 and 1 on Perez. And when you have that much range with your velocity and you have the kind of confidence he has in all four of his pitches to throw him for a strike, a lot of times it's a long night for the opposing hitters. Perez spent some time on the uh, concussion list. He came off that list on Sunday, and that's currently the list that Alex Avila is on. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Bouncing ball left side of the infield Iglesias. Nice play. Even the uh, bad hops uh, Iglesias looks and it makes him look rather routine. Not an easy play here he comes in creates a short hop hand down toward the glove. Gets a firm grip on it knows he has time to throw with Perez running. Two up two down here in the sixth. We haven't seen him throw from a three quarter arm slot. Most of the time, when Iglesias throws the ball to any of the bases, it's always underneath or sidearm, but with tremendous accuracy. Yeah, that last one was right at the letters of Prince Fielder. Ball inside. Justin Maxwell is the batter now with two outs. Here's the 1 0. When do you think baseball is going to really start to understand how good Anibal Sanchez is as we go to look at his ranges 95 to 71. Xfinity recorded those for us and pass them along. Well I don't know if it's going to happen because you've got Justin Verlander on this staff. You've got Scherzer who is 17 and 1 and he's gotten a lot of publicity around the league and Anibal just kind of. Flies under the radar, but he comes in with an ERA that's just been outstanding. Only 10 wins, but the secondary numbers are really, really good. Here's the 1 2. Bounce again, two balls, two strikes on Maxwell. Those that have faced Hannibal this year. You certainly know how good he is. Tonight he's given up just one run on six hits. Most pitchers you can sit on one pitch during the course of the game and know you're going to get that pitch quite often, but you can't really do that against Sanchez. He just got a piece of that one. And we've well documented the fact, too, about the Tigers' starter and pitchers. They're not afraid to throw their change up to the right handed batters. Just a few years ago, most right handers would not do that. Three times Sanchez this year has struck out double digits, including that 17 strikeout game against Atlanta way back earlier in the year. Another foul back out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Sanchez came in 
among the league leaders in a lot of different categories top 10 in strikeouts third in ERA. He tried to hold up couldn't do it see you later. One two three inning third strikeout for Anibal. He has been three of the last four. Sixth inning in game one in this five game series. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, we look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lights. Don Kelly starts it off for the Tigers. Prince Fielder has hit a home run in this game. A two run shot that came in the first inning, and the count is 0 2 on DK. Kelly a single and a strikeout. He'll be followed by Infante and then Pena. Against the right handed offerings of Jeremy Guthrie out of Roseburg, Oregon. And a slow roller hit toward third. Bonifacio. One out. Time for another game break as we check in now with Mickey York. All right, Mick, thanks. Here it is, four to one. Tigers have taken the lead here after falling behind one nothing in the first. Here's Omar Infante. Here's a ground ball back up the middle of the center. That'll be a hit for Infante. His first of the night. Tigers now have ten. It's a seventh hit for Omar Infante since coming off the disabled list. In four games. It'll bring up Brian Pena as we check out the Tigers box score here. Andy Dirk's having a big night at the top of the order. And everybody has at least one hit with the exception of Iglesias. Pena one for two, single and a fly ball. Tap foul, no balls and two strikes. Tigers tonight have six singles, three doubles, and a homer. The long ball belongs to Prince Fielder. Guthrie now about to throw his 80th pitch of the night. And it sails high, one and two. Former Royal Brian Pena, four seasons with the Royals, four seasons with Atlanta as well. 
and uh, quickly finding a home here in Detroit, having a solid season for the Tigers. Missed it outside. Two and two. Last year, Brian Payne was backing up and Salvador Perez, who is behind the dish right now for the Kansas City Royals. Backup catcher, that's pretty good gig. Driven down the right field line. That ball is hooking. Foul. Yeah, there are certain gigs in professional sports that are pretty good. And if you're competent at uh, calling a game and provide a little bit of offense, backup catcher, man, you can stick around a while. You're going to play on average two times a week. He's backing up Peyton now. Brian Holiday missed it again, three and two. Guthrie has given up a single here with one out. Tigers got two against him back in the fifth. RBI hits by Hunter and Cabrera. And it's rolled foul. And Fonte on the move, so he'll go back. Guthrie in the second half came into the start four and one with an ERA of three and a half. Some of his best work, as we told you at the top of the broadcast, coming against the Central Division. And right now he's sitting at 84 pitches. Ground ball right side base hit. Infante is on his way to third and he is in there. Quick throw back to first now Pena in a rundown. And Brian is out. Couple of uh, base running blunders uh, this evening by the Tigers. It is not going to sit well with Jim Leland. And Maxwell comes up, fires to the cutoff, man, but Pena was too aggressive here rounding the bag. Torrey with a base running air back in the third, get running into that double play. Now Pena here in the sixth inning. And so that'll leave a runner at third and two outs. And Iglesias trying to get him in. Strike one. 314 average now for Jose. 96363 on that last put out. Oh and two. Tiger bench perhaps chirping on that last one. And played umpire John Hirschbeck looked in. Here's the 0-2. Bouncing in. One ball, two strikes. The Tigers tonight going for their 70th win. They did not win their 70th game last year until August the 31st. So they're about two weeks ahead of schedule this season compared to last year. Swing and a miss, and Iglesias. We'll end the inning with a strikeout. No runs, two hits, one left. We are headed to the seventh.
of them with a real good two seam fastballs inside change ups and sinker balls away from the left handers he's also mixed in some really good change ups and when they're not hitting ground balls he's getting strikeouts a couple of change ups followed by an elevated fastball he works the four quadrants of the strike zone as well as any pitcher in the American League and he'll go back to work now as we head to the seventh inning 4 1 in favor of the Tigers they've out hit the Royals 11 to 6. Both sides have left five men on base. Emilio Bonifacio is starting things off. Well, tips one into the glove, and the count is 0 and 2. Sanchez usually more of a fly ball pitcher and getting more strikeouts, but tonight, a lot of grounders, 10 ground ball outs thrown by Sanchez. The last one was his 100th pitch of the evening. It's bottom three facing Sanchez, and a strike called on the outer edge. See you later. Bonifacio is out. Strikeout starting to pile up now. That's four of them in his last five batters. I'll see this Escobar. And yeah, more than likely, this will be Sanchez's last inning, so they're going to need two innings out of that bullpen. And Jim Leland said uh, before the game today, even though Joaquin Benoit got five innings, five outs yesterday, he is good to go this evening. Bruce Rondon heating up. Escobar is 0 for 2. Right down the middle. At 94 miles an hour, 0 and 1. Two forty five average for Alcides Escobar. Chopper to short. Iglesias bobbles. Stays with it. And throws him out. Two gone. Fans, don't forget to join us again tomorrow. It's a day night doubleheader here against the Royals. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Tigers and Royals tomorrow at 1 and 6. We'll have both of them for you right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Pack lunch tomorrow, partner. I will do that, sir. Two up, two down here in the seventh. Gerard Dyson. Strike one. Dice in the ground out and a fly out. Strike called on the outer edge, 0 and 2. Dyson now parts of five seasons with the Major League Club. Sanchez trying to make quick work of him. Just got a piece of it. Seven straight retired by the Tigers right hander Chris Getz lurking on deck 4 1 Detroit in the seventh. Now Anibal looks in for. The signal on the 0-2, but he takes too long. Speaking of that doubleheader tomorrow, Jose Alvarez will be called up. He'll pitch the night game. Justin Verlander pitching the day game. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Luis Sanchez on a roll now. He's retired eight straight, five punch outs. And he may be done for the night, but a good night it has been. 4-1 in favor of Detroit. Stretch time.
Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Arby's. Try Arby's Grand Turkey Club today. Arby's slicing up freshness. And by Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Nice evening for baseball here in the Motor City. 71 degrees. Tigers have a 4 to 1 lead on KC as Andy Dirks starts it off here in the bottom of the seventh. And Andy's had a big night. Three hits, including a pair of doubles. One ball, one strike. Dirks, Hunter, and then Cabrera. Fouled back out of play, one and two. Austin Jackson played every single day on the just completed road trip, so Jim Leland wanted to get him off his feet for one evening. And there's Austin chilling on the bench tonight. Andy Dirks doing marvelous work in his absence in that leadoff slot. Here's the one two. Ball high. Two and two on Dirks. Down the right field line, that's going to be a four hit game for Andy. He is swinging it tonight. I see you, Andy Dirks. Well, let's take a look at Andy Dirks' night. Uh, first time up, he singled. Uh, it was very sharply. It was right uh, in the right field. Then he came back up in the third inning. He doubled this time. Then he doubled the next time he was up as well. Another single in the right field. So, four hit day for uh, Tiger's left fielder. Leadoff man here tonight. That last one made it a four for four. That is a really good sign to see Andy Dirks get four hits here today. And I'm sure Jim is hoping that he perks up and continues to swing the bat the way that everybody knows Andy Dirks is capable of swinging the bat. One ball, no strikes on Torrey Hunter. The Tigers on top four to one. There goes the runner. And a ground ball, base hit left field. Out of the reach of Bonifacio, but Dirks will stop at second. Jim pushing all the right buttons uh, here this evening. He started Andy Dirks. Torrey was forced into swinging via the hit and run, and he had a seed right past Bonifacio. Two on nobody out. And Miguel Cabrera is strolling in. Six home runs for Cabrera when the Tigers hit the road. 38 for the season now for Miggy. Chris Davis, 44 home runs, 38 Cabrera. Keep waiting for Davis to slow down, but he's not. Miguel leads in the other two triple crown categories. Ball outside, one ball and one strike. Kansas City has some activity going on in their bullpen right now. Kansas City has a great bullpen, not necessarily the front end of that bullpen, but that back end of their bullpen is in lockdown mode right now. Lewis Coleman warming up. Fouled off. One and two on Miguel Cabrera. Fielder's already homered tonight. He's on deck. This will be the 100th pitch coming up for Jeremy Guthrie. And it's a ground ball short. Escobar flips to second, gets with a relay. That'll be a double play. 6 4 3, two outs, advance Dirks to third. So now Fielder with two away. Homer pop up ground out. And a strategy session between Perez and Guthrie. Here's the uh, home run Prince Fielder hit back in the first inning. It was a breaking ball that was down and that gave the Tigers a two run lead. One ball no strikes on Prince. Yeah the Royals scored an early run against Sanchez in the first inning. Adamel threw 30 pitches in the first. 
gave up a run and then fielder came right back and slammed a long two run homer. That has popped up third base side Bonifacio can't get there. He was played around off the bag at 30 couldn't make up all that real estate. One and one. Missed it outside. Two balls, one strike on Prince. Should he reach, Martinez is waiting on deck. Fly ball. Left field. Hit pretty good to play. Well, Gordon now coming in a couple of steps. But the double play helps. Inning is over, and we go to the eighth. Five hour energy shots. Back here in the Motor Cities, we bring you our AT&T trivia question again tonight. Here it is. Which three players have more hits than Eric Hosmer, who has 54 since July the 1st? Only three have had more. That would be Victor, Adrian Beltran, and Chris Johnson. 59 for Victor Martinez. And Sanchez still out there had about 108 through seven innings so he will return to the mound here in the eighth Chris Guest leading it off foul back out of play no balls two strikes the season high for Sanchez 130 pitches as you look at his average per start 101 the 130 was back in May and that was the night in which he struck out 12 Minnesota Twins. Sanchez retired 11 of the last 12 batters fanning five of the last seven. Down the right field line Torrey on the run he'll get there. One out. That'll bring up Eric Hosmer. You might recall that 12 strikeout effort against the Twins in 130 pitches the night that he nearly had the no hitter against Minnesota. Until Joe Maurer spoiled everything. Here's Hosmer. In there, strike one on Hosmer. Six. 
single ground out pop up for Osmer. That's going to get through a base hit out of the reach of a diving in Miguel Cabrera. Second hit of the night for Hosmer. One on one out, and this Wednesday the Tigers face the Minnesota Twins at 708. The first count, 10,000 fans receive an Adamal Sanchez and Mickey Lolich strikeout Kings poster. I told you about the 17 that Adamal had. Call 866 Tiger or visit Tigers.com. Mickey had 16 in the game back in 1969. Sanchez about to get himself a big round of applause and boy does he deserve it. Pitching change here in Detroit. And we shall return. Try and quiet things down here in the eighth. Big arm for Bruce Rondone. Just about every fastball that he throws, it comes out of his hand at about 100 miles an hour. And he will face Billy Butler, Alex Gordon lurking. It's 4 1 Detroit in the eighth. One on, one out. One ball, no strikes. And Butler, who tonight is hit into a double play, struck out and flat out to center. In there for a strike. One and one the counts. Anibal Sanchez with the jacket on now. What another outstanding effort tonight for Sanchez. Runner on first is still his, but seven and a third, seven hits, one run. One and two now on Billy Butler. Three pitches that he's thrown to Billy Butler. Two fastballs at 96, one at 97, but a little two seam action out of the hand of Rondon. I don't remember seeing him throw two seamers. Used the he's four seam fastball, 99 to 100. Here's the one two. To right field, Hunter backing up. Two gone. Today's win for the game is brought to you by Head and Shoulders. And uh, Sanchez in the five strikeouts that he got here this evening is going to show us all four of his pitches. Curveball there, change up there, elevated fastball to get one, and then he goes back down to the bottom of the zone with a nice slider. So. And we talked about his four pitch mix and the confidence that he has in throwing all four of those pitches and he put them on display here this evening. Now Gordon with two outs. Fastball up one out. 
They've been getting uh, Alex out with the uh, changeups all year long. But if Rondon throws him a changeup, it's going to be about at 87, 89 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> not your average changeup. It is not. <laughs> Here's the 1 0. Gordon singled in a run in the first, and to this point, their only run of the game. Nothing but goose eggs put up there with Sanchez and Rondon. They've limited the Royals to seven hits. Tigers have 13 hits tonight. Two and one. There was that changeup out of the hand of Rondon at 89 miles an hour. Salvador Perez waiting on deck. Bruce was called up earlier this year and then sent down and then uh, his second call up the Tigers felt that uh, it's time to give him a shot to see what he can do at this level. Here's the two one way outside three and one. Tigers got two runs in the first they added two more in the fifth. And they have led ever since Prince Fielder hit his two run shot in the first inning tonight. Here's the 3 1. Broke at bat, pop up. I mean, sawed it right in half. Miggy with a sliding catch. Runner stranded. Sanchez, Rondon combining on a nice outing tonight. Inning here at the ballpark tonight. Another big crowd celebrating, hopefully, a Tigers win. And so far, so good. We've got a change now for the Royals. It is a wall side windows pitching change. Uh, Lewis Coleman, yeah, he features a fastball that will get to 92. He's got a curveball, he's got a slider, he also has a changeup. 15 games, 17 innings, a whip of under 120 strikeouts, and just three walks. 22 inning scoreless streak, which dates back to September of 2012. Lewis Coleman facing Victor Martinez. There's a swing and a drive to center field hit well Dyson on the run still going back he covered a ton of real estate he could fly whoa. 
Martinez crushed that thing. And when it left Martinez's bat, I didn't think Dyson had a chance to run it down. But he took a first quick step and he took a direct line to get to the baseball and then coasted once he got there. Man, can he run? One out. Here is Don Kelly. Kelly is one for three, had a single back in the second. That's in for a strike. And the count goes to one and one. Infante will bat next. Tigers batting in the bottom of the eighth, up by three. The one one. If you're wondering if Joaquin Benoit is available tonight after going multiple innings in yesterday's win against Chicago, there's your answer. Got five outs to yesterday. And getting that save in Chicago. And the one two. Fly ball right field. And Maxwell hauls it in. There are two gone now here in the eighth inning. Hey, get ready, fans. Fox Sports 1, America's new 24 hour sports network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for great live sports. All the news and highlights you want, shows and specials that only Fox could bring you. America's new sports network is Fox Sports 1, coming in two days. And uh, Cletus is here today, hanging out with the fans. Fox Sports Girl. Fox Sports 1 is almost here. Here's Omar. That's in for a strike 0 and 1. That Royals bullpen has thrown the fewest innings in the American League this year. Thanks to their improved starting pitching. Dayton Moore, their general manager, knew that he had to do something because last year the only other bullpen in baseball that threw more innings than the Kansas City Royals were the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, but with that revamped starting staff, uh, that bullpen stays fresh. Fly ball, center field, Dyson, a more routine play to end the inning. One, two, three. Go the Tigers. We're going to the ninth. Joaquin Benoit with Perez, Maxwell, Bonifacio coming up.
Royals as we go to the ninth inning. It is four to one in favor of the Detroit Tigers and Tigers live post game coming up with more on that. Let's check in with Shannon Hogan. Hi guys. Yeah. Immediately after the game, after the game, you're going to want to stay tuned to Fox Sports Detroit for Tigers live. I'm going to be talking with Jim Leland and some of the other players in the Tigers clubhouse. And of course, we're going to have analysis from Craig Monroe and highlights too. That's immediately after the game right here on Fox Sports Detroit. All right, Shannon. Thank you. We certainly look forward to it. Should be a whole lot of fun. Assuming the Tigers hold on to this lead here, and we assume they will, as Joaquin Benoit comes in now. 15 to 15 uh, in save and save opportunities for the closer, Joaquin Benoit. He's got a fastball that will go anywhere from 93 to 96 with movement. He's got a slider and he's got a changeup that is a tremendous out pitch for him. Defensive changes. Jackson now in center field. Kelly is in left. Santiago is at third. And a chopper hit back up the middle. Iglesias charging. Quick throw got him. One gone. Iglesias already has a pretty nice little uh, highlight reel that uh, he's developed since he's put on a Tigers uniform. Hasn't been here real long. He has not. But Check look at the flip out. of the wrist though. Just kind of flips it over there. And accurate too. I like him. <laughs> I do too. A lot. One out. Here's Maxwell. Benoit trying to nail this one down. He needs two more outs. Maxwell a double and three at bats. In for a strike. Joaquin had to get five outs yesterday in Chicago to nail down that win. There's a ball outside, one ball, one strike. Twenty seven pitches thrown yesterday by Benoit. It'll bounce in. Two balls, one strike. Bruce Rondone got a couple of outs in the eighth, and now Benoit trying to nail it shut here in the ninth. Emilio Bonifacio waiting on deck. Here's the 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two two. Tigers 13 hits. 7 for the Royals. KC got a run in the first and they've been shut out since. Joaquin over his last 27 outings has 13 saves and an ERA of 1-0-1. Fouled away. We talked about this before, but it's just it's amazing how things work out over the course of a baseball season. Not many thought that at this point of the year Benoit would be the closer. No, because he could have very easily given him that job out of spring training, but he didn't uh, give it to Benoit. Benoit has been so good for the Tigers in the eighth inning. Jim Leland didn't want to mess with that. Of course, the Valverde experiment didn't work. Here's the 2-2. Ball inside three and two. Benoit at times this year has closed games before he was officially named the closer. But the addition of Jose Veras has given the Tigers another veteran arm to back him up. Rondon also starting to pitch better. Drew Smiley at the back end. Three and two. Uh, Justin Maxwell. Ball four, and so the Royals now have one on, one out. Here's Bonifacio. Bonifacio single, ground out, strikeout, and a stolen base.
Santiago inside at third base. Prince playing in front of the runner at first. He shows bunt strike one. Well, Jim always, especially with this injury to Cabrera now, really has to think through situations on when he takes Cabrera out of the game at the end for defensive purposes. Or as a pinch runner. Right. Which you talk about today. He's had to do that a couple of times. Or think about it at least. Ball outside. Now it's 1-1. One, one. It is only a three-run game. You certainly run the risk of going extra innings and then all of a sudden your big hitter is out of the lineup. But Tigers tightening up the defense now with Santiago and Jackson in center. Fouled off one and two. Thirty seven thousand eight seventy two tonight here at the ballpark. It is not a sellout awfully close though thirty seven eight seventy two. With two games tomorrow doubleheader. Amazingly uh, it not being a sellout tonight snap a string of 12 consecutive. Sellouts here at Comerica Park. Yeah, that last homestand, every single game was sold out. Here's the one two. High, two balls, two strikes. And Emilio Bonifacio. Tigers will play uh, 15 of their next 18 games right here at home where they have a great record. The only uh, road trip coming up next week is that three gamer to New York to take on the Mets. Line drive caught and holding on to it, Iglesias. He thought about firing it over to first. Two gone. Maxwell able to get back. Wise decision by Iglesias after he was able to snare the line drive. He took a look over there, thought about throwing it, then thought better of it. So we need one more out. I don't want to throw this ball away. Here comes the crowd now and here is Escobar who is 0 for 4 against Benoit. This crowd has been treated to a pretty good baseball game. Escobar is 0 for 3 tonight. Runner going and a ground ball to third. Santiago has there should do it. That is a Tigers victory. Nice way to start the homestand for sure. Against a team that had its sights set on coming into Comerica Park and Making some headway, but the Tigers take game one in this series. And as a result, the Tigers push Kansas City eight games back now in the Central. And Detroit at 71 and 49. Andy Dirk's a big night with a bat tonight. Sanchez was awesome, and we'll be back with a whole lot more from the ballpark.